Hey there everyone, Mike Newson here from Lawson Heights Alliance Church. We're here online on Facebook and YouTube to be able to share with you a simple tool to be able to share your story with the people in your life network. Now, over the last little while in our online services, we've been talking about the remarkable church, God's remarkable family called the church. And part of that has come a challenge for us to learn our story, our stories of faith, so that we can share it with people that we know, people that we care about, people that we meet on the street or at the grocery store. It's a simple 15 second testimony that you can kind of tuck away in the back of your pocket so that when you have the opportunity or when you make the opportunity, you'll be able to share it with someone else. So let's walk through this together. All right, to participate in this training, I'm going to require a couple of things from you. Number one, a mindset. A mindset that this is training, this is equipping. This isn't just something that you briefly look at on Facebook or on YouTube and get a general idea of it. This is training, okay? And so I'm gonna ask you to dedicate at least one hour of your time right now. If you can't give an hour right now, I want you to just stop the video and come back to it when you do have an hour because there will be exercises throughout this training that you're going to have to fulfill during this time. And then each day, each week, for the next week, I'm going to ask you to give at least 15 minutes to half an hour to rehearse your story so that it is quickly and easily repeatable to someone else. See, again, I said, if you have something that is quick and easy that you can just kind of have in your back pocket, whenever you have an opportunity or whenever you can make an opportunity, you'll be able to share it just like that, okay? So you're going to need time. You're also going to need a piece of paper. I encourage you to get an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and uh, then fold it in half, kind of like a little booklet, because on each of the infold pages and on the back fold, you're going to be able to uh, repeat and rehearse this uh, training that we're doing here today. And of course, you'll need a pen, okay? Then I want you to prepare yourself for that. So if you need to pause the video right now to go and get all these things, I encourage you to do that. There was a time in my life when I was lost, I was self-centered, and I was angry. But then I met Jesus, and he changed everything for me. And since then, I have had hope, I've had compassion for other people where I never had it before, and I've had joy, unspeakable joy. Do you have a story like that? See, 15 seconds is all you need. Let's break that down. All right, your 15 second testimony begins with a statement, and it goes like this. There was a time in my life when, so at the very top part of your first page, I want you to just draw the number one and write out that statement. There was a time in my life when. There was a time in my life when. And then what you want to do is you want to get an arrow that looks back and draw another arrow that sort of looks ahead. And on that, I want you to go, I was, this is what your life was like before coming to Jesus. There was a time in my life when I was, now I'm gonna give you my brief little synopsis of my life, and you can use that, or I encourage you to find some other points, some other details that describe your life succinctly what it was like before, okay? Mine was, there was a time in my life when I was lost, I was self-centered, and I was angry. Okay? I was lost, I was self-centered, and I was angry. Okay? I want you to pause the video for a moment and I want you to think of three things for yourself that describes your life before you came to Christ, okay? Now, just a little bit of a hint here. If you grew up in the church, perhaps you accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior when you were just a little kid, and there wasn't really much kind of bad going on in your life before. Most people, by the time they reach the teenage years, they do a reaffirmation of their faith. They, they, something happens in their life that they take time to say, God, I just, I just want to recommit my life to Jesus Christ. 
So I want you to think of what was kind of going on in your world before that happened, before you said, Jesus, I'm going to rededicate my life to you. Okay? So pause the video, take a minute, and think of those three things. And when you've got them down like I've got them, I want you to return to the video and press play again. All right, you got those three things? There was a time in my life when I was lost, I was self-centered, and I was angry. All right, you got those three points? Now, you could go into huge amounts of detail here regarding what your life was like before you met Jesus, okay? But I want you to resist that because this is a time to be succinct. This is a time to be able to get your testimony into 15 seconds. And that won't be easy to do if you have this long, drawn-out description. Sometimes when we do our training here at Lawson, we do a, a thing called 411 training. It's four questions uh, uh, done in one hour on one piece of paper. And when people are going through this part of the 411 training, sometimes they like to go on and on and on about their testimony. They just don't know kind of when to start and when to stop on things. And so if you can keep it brief and to the point, that will help you again keep it in your back pocket for a time that God leads you and directs you. Okay? So if you found those three points, great. If they're not succinct, if they're a long sentence, which you probably won't be able to remember over time, Keep them nice and short like this. So if you don't have it nice and succinct like this, pause the video again and come back. All right, are you back? Okay, listen, there was a time in my life when I was lost, I was self-centered, and I was angry. Now I want you to just take a moment and I want you to say that out loud, okay? All right, did you get that? Okay, I want you to say your three points out loud with this question. Okay, you got it? One more time, just for posterity, okay? There was a time in my life when I was what? Okay, you got it? All right, now we're gonna add another statement, all right? And it goes like this. So draw number two on your page. But then I met Jesus. But then I met Jesus. Write that down on your page, right about halfway down the page. There was a time in my life when I was lost. I was self-centered, and I was angry. But then I met Jesus. And I like to kind of throw in, and he changed everything for me. This is the key point. But then I met Jesus, and draw a cross in the middle of your page. All right? There was a time in my life, let's repeat that. There was a time in my life when I was, name the three things, but then I met Jesus. Now why is it important to say that rather than I accepted Christ as my personal Lord and Savior or I prayed a prayer? It's because Jesus is a person. Christianity is a relationship with the living Lord Jesus Christ. He is risen. Amen? He is risen indeed. That means that you are not giving your life, dedicating your life to a thought to a philosophy, to a religion, to a theology, to an idea about Jesus, you are giving your life, you are meeting the person of Jesus. And if your testimony does not include that, if you only came into the Christian faith as a religion, then you perhaps don't have a relationship with Jesus. So there was a time in my life when I was lost, I was self-centered, and I was angry. But then I met Jesus. And it's important to get that point in there. Okay? So I want you to pause the video now, and I want you to rehearse what we have now. There was a time in my life when, and then you go through this, the points, but then I met Jesus. Put the cross in there. Okay? Pause the video and rehearse that. All 
All right, there was a time in my life when I was lost, I was self-centered, and I was angry. But then I met Jesus, and he changed everything for me. And since then, so this is what's going to go up here. Since, since then, and then you would want to take those three points that you had here and give the opposites. Now, of course, we're assuming that it is true. For me, it goes, there was a time in my life when I was lost, I was self-centered, and I was angry. Because I was. That was my life. That was my testimony at that time. But then I met Jesus, and he changed everything for me. And since then, this is mine, I have hope. Okay? I have compassion. And I have joy. Unspeakable joy. All right? So these are my three points. So you can see how they parallel one another, right? I was lost, but now I have hope. I was self-centered, but now I have compassion. I was angry, but now I have joy. Now, are these things completely out of my life? No, because as I grow in my personal relationship with Jesus, as I get to know Him more, then he, he continues to change me. He continues to, as we describe it in, in, in Christian circles, He continues to sanctify me or grow me to become more like Him. And so I was lost, but I have hope now. I, I have an amazing hope, not just for the future, not just for eternal life, but I have hope that God has a plan for this world that it will, that it will have nothing but salvation and peace for humanity. I also have compassion. I never had that before I met Christ. Before I met Christ, I was self-centered. Before I met Christ, I didn't care about other people. I didn't care about their feelings. I was judgmental. I was all these things. But since coming to Christ, He changed that in me. And I noticed that pretty much right away. And then I have joy. Man, I would go through days of anger and, and fits of rage. I would punch things. I was, I was so angry that I had no joy. And it's what I think drove me most to Christ. And since finding Him, meeting Him, I now have joy. Every single day I have joy. So I want you to take a moment now and I want you to find your three opposites of these. Okay, Your three things that parallel but are opposite of the things that you once were. Okay, So pause the video. Write those things down. And again, you want to keep them brief. You want to keep them in one word if you can, or two, right? I guess this is sort of still one word. It is hyphenated, self-centered. So that you can have them in your back pocket ready to go. If they're too long, remember what? Yeah, you tend to forget stuff like that. So we want to keep it simple, repeatable, and rapid. All right? That's our goal. So take those moments. Go through those three things. All right, you got it? Let's rehearse this together, shall we? There was a time in my life when I was what? Repeat yours. But then I met Jesus. And since then, what? Your three things. Okay, take a moment. If you need to pause the video, that's cool. I'll wait a few minutes just so that you can go over yours. There was a time in my life when. Let's rehearse. All right, I'm pausing the video. We have one more statement left, okay? Our two main statements was there was a time in my life when, but then I met Jesus, and here's the next one. You ready for this? Number three. Do you have a story like that? Do you have a story like that? So it goes like this. There was a time in my life when I was lost. I was self-centered. And I was angry. But then I met Jesus and he changed everything for me. And since then, I have hope, I have compassion, and I have joy. 
Do you have a story like that? All right, I want you to pause the video again and I want you to repeat that five times. Get that part of your story done, okay? Pause. All right, now that you've asked that third question, do you have a story like that? They could come up with one of three answers, right? Th those three answers are simple. They could say yes, they could say no, I don't have a story like that, or they could say get lost, I'm not interested. All fair answers, right? If they do say yes, understand that they may or may not have a faith as vibrant as yours. They may not have a story of faith like you have. They may have never have really met Jesus. They might just be saying it to get you off their back, or they might have the very beginnings of a Christian faith. Maybe they have an interest in Jesus, and maybe Jesus has profoundly impacted them somehow, but they don't know how to articulate their own story. So what you could do is just sort of answer their answer with another question. You would just start by saying, that's great, and just be really affirmative, just be really affirming so that they will be encouraged to go deeper with you. Just say, that's great. Let me share with you a diagram that will help to explain how I met Jesus, and then I want to hear how you did, okay? Now, again, from here, they might say, yeah, no, I don't have time for that. Fair enough. You've given them your testimony, something to chew on. Now your work of prayer begins, right? But if they do say, yeah, okay, show me this diagram. Well, then you could go ahead and show them what we call the three circles. Or maybe you might want to find, like from Billy Graham Association, the steps to peace with God. Or um, any other sort of Bible diagram that explains the transition from unbelief to belief, from being far from Jesus to getting to know God personally. Okay? Uh, in a couple of weeks, hopefully we'll share the three circles with you in a training like this, if this receives uh, any good feedback, and then we will go from there. Okay? But if they say yes, then say, great. Let me share with you how I met Jesus, and then you share that with me, okay? If they say no, so that is kind of a red light, right? They might say, no, I, I don't have a story like that, but that doesn't mean the conversation has to end there. You can say, well, you know what? Let me show you a diagram that will help to explain how I met Jesus, and maybe you might be able to uh, explain how you are in your journey right now in finding God, okay? Something as simple as that. And the last one is, uh, no, I'm not interested. Now that may seem like uh, a red light, but it could be what we call a yellow light. It's a, it's a I'm not interested right now, right? So you know, again, if they swear at you and all that kind of stuff, then it's probably a red light and you could probably move on. But I would still make an invitation to them. If they say, I'm not interested, you can say, you know what, that's fair. Uh, but would you be interested in getting together to look over the Bible to find out what you believe about Jesus and how you can meet him for yourself? It's a very simple invitation. And you never know. They might take you up on that. And they might want to study the Bible with you. And then that means that you need to be prepared to follow up with them to say, okay, well, let's exchange numbers and then I'll text you and, and we can work out a time that we can get together to study the Bible. Maybe we'll go to a cafe or a local park and we'll look at, say, the Gospel of John. If you want to start reading in the Gospel of John ahead of time, um, that would be great. That would help to get our, our conversation going a little quicker. Now, if you don't have a Bible, let me know. I'll bring one with me. I'll give it to you, okay? Those kinds of things need to happen And if you're ever going to continue the conversation towards faith. Got it? All right, now what I want you to do is I want you to go and I want you to rehearse this uh, so that you are more confident with it. So take a moment and kind of walk through your 15-second testimony. Take out your phone, go to the clock feature, and time yourself to make sure that you're keeping it under 15 seconds. Because this will get you, again, having it so it's short, simple, repeatable, and rapid, right? So that at the moment's notice, if someone ever says to you, hey, why do you act so differently than the rest of the people around me? Or, you know, you, I know you believe in God. What does that mean for you? Those, then you'll be ready, okay? So time yourself, put the pause button on, and then we'll come back together. All right, now that you've got it rehearsed, I want you to do something for me. Remember I told you that you would need an hour of this time right now so that you can, you can be trained and equipped to be able to share your story with others. Now I want you to share your story with another. 
Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to call up a Christian friend, someone that you know uh, would help you in this. Give them a call and I want you to ask them this question. Hey, listen, I'm going through this training right now, actually, as we speak, and our instructor has told me that I need to call one of my friends and ask them if I can practice on them. Would you be willing to listen to my 15-second testimony and, and allow me to, to repeat it to you, to rehearse it with you, and so that I can become more familiar with it and I can, I can be more prepared to share it with others? And you know what? If they love you, if they're, if they're a good friend, they'll do it for you. Why am I still talking on the phone? Anyway, you can call up your friend right now to do that. And so I want you to, again, pause the video. You can come back to it later. And I want you to call another friend, and I want you to do that. And so part of that is, is you're going to be doing it without looking at your notes, okay? Hopefully now, by now, you've, you've rehearsed it enough on your own, and you've got it under 15 seconds that you will be able to share it with someone else, okay? The next, episode, the next uh, assignment that I'm going to have for you is I'm going to get you to share it with someone in person, another believer, all right? And so after you're done talking to them on the phone about it, and this might be something that might encourage them to learn their 15-second testimony, and you can tell them where to find this video. Or you can train them yourself. You can go back, get a piece of paper out, pen, and you both go out and you, uh, go, get together and you rehearse it together and you train them, okay? You should be able to train another person with this very simply. You can do it, okay? So get on the phone, call that person and train them. Or, sorry, listen to them. All right, now, remember I said before that you're going to have to get together with someone. Uh, th that would be someone in your family, maybe somebody who comes home tonight or one of your children getting together with them. And you could also take this time to train them in the 15-second testimony. Get them all lined up after you're done training and get them all to repeat it to each other. Get them to turn to one another and, and get them to do it. That way, everybody in your household is ready to be able to share your story of faith with another person. Okay? And if you don't have anyone at home, this is what you need to do. I need you to tell that person that you just called. You need to call them up again if you didn't do it earlier. Call them up again and say, okay, listen, I want to come to your backyard. I want to sit down and I'll bring coffee. I'll go to Tim's. I'll grab coffee or hot chocolate or tea or whatever your, your preference is. And uh, I, want to, I want to walk through this with you so that I'm, I'm more able to share it with someone in person. Okay? And then you can just walk through it. All right, walk through some different scenarios in meeting people. Uh, maybe pretend the other person's at a bus stop or someone's in the library or someone at work and get them to respond back to you after they're done with a yes, a no, or not interested, get lost, and see how you react, okay? It's all about, again, getting prepared and ready to be able to share it. And the easier and more confident you are with the material, the better and easier it will be to share it with other people. Hey, thanks so much for joining us in this online training. It's a very simple tool, and I hope that it has been of benefit to you, and I hope that you will follow through on the training. Remember what the Great Commission says before we close. Jesus met with his disciples, and he says to them, Listen, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and then what? Teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. You know what? We need to be prepared to be able to share an answer, a reason for the hope that lies within us with gentleness and respect. And your 15-second testimony is you one step closer to being able to do that. And it is so easy to learn. So you need to learn also in being a good disciple of Jesus, just like I have to learn. We all need to learn how to obey Jesus. And part of that is being equipped to be able to share your testimony and to be able to disciple other people. If you'd like to know more about how to be a better disciple for Jesus and how to more fully share the gospel and your story of faith with others, we have, an, uh, we have a training that's available, and I hate to do it online. Uh, we're, we'll do it in person. We'll get together uh, small groups. Either I can Zoom with you, or we can do it here at the church uh, in small groups. Uh, we'll social distance, don't worry. And we'll train you to be able to go through uh, some discipleship material that will equip you to be able to be a better disciple and a witness for Jesus. God bless you. Thanks for joining us. We'll hope to do more of these kinds of things in the future. God bless.